It is a very interesting experience when one sincerely sets aside partisan passion and ideology to seek, to the best of one's ability, the truth, whatever it is and wherever it may lie. In pursuing that objective, Citizens for the Common Good has found itself led, in large measure, to the same political ground as promulgated by Catholic social teaching. Unlike Catholic social teaching, however, we were not constrained or confined by theological belief, ritual, or tradition. Nevertheless, as one could expect, honest seekers for truth, by whatever path, end up in the same place. Interestingly, other seekers for truth, most notably Martin Luther King's search for truth from the vantage point of Baptist theology, the early American progressives' search for truth from the vantage point of Protestant theology during the period roughly spanning 1880 to 1920, businessman Aaron Furestein's search for truth from his understanding of Jewish social teaching found in the Torah, and America's founders, by different paths and entering perhaps through different doors, all find themselves in the same place, standing on the same political ground. From the vantage point of that political ground, we are faced with a rather harsh truth, namely that both the Republicans and Democrats are in a glaring state of sin as their policies relate to Catholic social teaching. The basic policies of the national government can be classified under three broad headings, economic policy, foreign policy, and social policy. On all three general policies, the Republicans and Democrats are on the opposite side of the church. Let us consider three areas of economic policy. A key principle of Catholic social teaching is the proclamation that the dignity of every human being is sacred, and that dignity naturally extends to the dignity of work and the rights of workers. And yet, the Republicans and Democrats both pursue policies that facilitate corporate America's demand for cheap labor. The very phrase, cheap labor, is an insult to the dignity of labor, and the current bipartisan policies regarding open immigration and so-called free trade are nothing more than a roundabout way of legalizing the indignity of slave labor. Catholic social teaching also denounces an economic system where the means of production are centralized either under the control of the government, as in socialism, or under the control of a few large businesses or wealthy individuals, as in capitalism. According to Catholic social teaching, the means of production should be spread as widely as possible among all the citizens of the nation. And yet, neither the Republicans nor the Democrats have made a concerted effort to institute the structural changes necessary to achieve a wider distribution of investment assets. The policies of both the Republicans and Democrats have and will continue to increase the concentration, not lessen it. Catholic social teaching also calls into question extensive inequalities of income and consumption when so many fellow citizens lack basic necessities. But as we note in our presentation, Taxation and the Common Good, Republicans contend that growing inequality is not a problem to be solved. Democrats occasionally mention concern, but judged by their lack of political action, they have accepted growing inequality. When considering America's bipartisan foreign policy, both the Republicans and Democrats reject the just war doctrine. Paragraph 2309 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church states, The strict conditions for legitimate defense by military force require rigorous consideration. The gravity of such a decision makes it subject to rigorous conditions of moral legitimacy. At one and the same time, the damage inflicted by the aggressor on the nation or community of nations must be lasting, grave, and certain. All other means of putting an end to it must have been shown to be impractical or ineffective. There must be serious prospects of success. The use of arms must not produce evils and disorders 
graver than the evil to be eliminated. The power of modern means of destruction weighs very heavily in evaluating this condition. As one Catholic has opined, the principles above ought to be considered for all military action and are violated by just about all contemporary and recent instances in which our military has been deployed. We see a complete disregard of Catholic and traditional Christian teaching on war. Finally, a fundamental tenet of Catholic social teaching is that the government should be an aid to virtue, not a hindrance. As explained by John Sharp of IHS Press, known for publishing out-of-print Catholic works, a government which legally and publicly recognizes an unlimited profit motive on the one hand and unlimited selfish individualism on the other, both unconcerned with how the amassing of productive wealth or sensual self-indulgence adversely affects the rest of society, is a society fundamentally disordered and inconsistent with Catholic teaching. Again, both Republicans and Democrats are in a glaring state of sin as their policies relate to Catholic social teaching. Sin is an evil for which Catholics have a compelling moral obligation to do battle against. Hedonism, pessimism, and apathy are rejected as unholy states of thought. Pope John XXIII wrote in his Pacem in Tiris, Once again, we exhort Catholics to take an active part in public life. But what is a Catholic to do when neither the Republicans or the Democrats are deserving of any electoral support from Catholics? We suggest the time has come for Catholics to join in coalition to create a third choice more compatible with the Church's teachings. The power in the Pope's words can be discerned by realizing that if most of the professed Catholics in America were instrumental in helping to create that third choice, America, and as a result the world, would be quickly elevated to a holier state that would be politically manifested in short order. To that end, we invite you to seriously consider affiliation with a budding mass movement for the common good. Under the auspices of Citizens for the Common Good, consider making a pledge to a future citizen presidential candidate of $25 or more and get a Citizens for the Common Good yard sign, bumper sticker, or button to let your community know there's a third choice blossoming in America. On behalf of Citizens for the Common Good, we hope you decide to join with us because America needs a third choice.